seated. Good morning, all. Welcome, welcome. It's good to be the church with you all on this Christmas day. A very Merry Christmas to you. Let's um, get ourselves oriented. Want to welcome guests and visitors. Hope that you are able to participate fully in worship. We will celebrate Holy Communion today, and all are welcome to receive. We have uh, bulletins on the table for those that would like, but everything is on the screen. You should be able to participate fully. So we think about our worship schedule during this holiday. Next Sunday is New Year's Day, and we will have one service at uh, 9 a.m. On that day, I'll be joined by a couple of guys. Uh, we are part of a little music trio called Beacon. We bring music to uh, house, the House of Corrections and different facilities like that. Uh, those guys have agreed to help out on New Year's Day to lead worship music with me and we'll allow Aaron and Zach a free Sunday, which they rarely are able to enjoy. So that's next Sunday at 9 a.m. Any other announcements that I have neglected? Well, let's worship God together. Join in our Christmas acclamation. O oh Lord our God, how great and awesome you are. You made us in your image, and to save us, you made yourself in our image. Shout out the universe, sing the earth. The Lord of creation has taken flesh, so that you might never depart from him. Flesh of our flesh and blood of our blood, Jesus has called us into greater union with God. Bless the Lord. Christ is the word of God written in our hearts. He is the almighty God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Sing to Christ our mother, born in Bethlehem. Sing praise all you who hear. Jesus, the Messiah, our Savior, is the Son of God and the song of God heard in our hearts. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. All-powerful and unseen God, the coming of your light into our world has brightened our weary hearts with peace. Call us out of darkness and empower us to proclaim the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I now invite the Traxel family to light our Christmas candle at the center of our Advent wreath. Dad Jason is joined by Olivia and Brian.
Christmas reading from Titus chapter 3, verses 4 through 8. When the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. This Spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that, having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The saying is sure, I desire that you insist on these things so that those who have come to believe in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. These things are excellent and profitable to everyone. I want to invite the kids to come worship with me. Come on down, children. Good to be the church with you on Christmas Day. <coughs> Welcome and thank you for lighting the candle of Christmas today, Brian and Olivia. Good morning, Merry Christmas. One of the things I love about the Christmas story is that Jesus was born in a stable. It's amazing. And one of the things about being born in a stable, we learn in the Christmas story, and maybe you've seen Christmas books like this where there's lots of animals in the stable around Jesus. Have you seen any stories like that where there's animals in the stable? What would be your favorite animal to have in the stable? What's a favorite animal that you remember the Christmas story telling us about? Any animal? A donkey? A cow? Any other animals that we... Maybe a sheep? A goat? A mouse. Yeah, there's a Christmas story I love about a little mouse. And a what? A camel. a camel, of course. There had to be a camel. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you, everybody, about a story and a little bit about one of those animals. You'll have to wait and see, but it's one of the animals that you just told us about. And all of these animals remind us that God is with us and is surrounding us with God's warmth and love. So I'm going to invite you to pray with me and everyone can join me in prayer. Dear God, Dear God thank you for the warmth of the stable. Thank you for the warmth of the stable. Thank you for surrounding Jesus, Mary, and Joseph with the warmth of the animals. Thank you for surrounding Jesus, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph with the warmth of the animals. And thank you for your warmth, your love for us. And thank you for your warmth your love for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm so glad to worship God with you guys. You can go and be with your family and friends. We hear the Christmas gospel. You're invited to stand. If you're comfortable doing so, you may remain seated as well. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. And this was the first registration taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their towns to be registered. And Joseph also went into the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This shall be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth 
and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. The Christmas Gospel. You may be seated. To you all on Christmas Day, I want to welcome those who are worshiping with us online as well, wherever we are. We are the people of God and give thanks to God for Dustin and James who are live streaming us and uh, helping us out throughout the holiday season and sharing their Christmas with us. seem a little strange that uh, a donkey takes center stage for our Christmas day hearing of God's word, but if we stop and think about it, it fits pretty well. After all, we, uh, we human beings are not as sophisticated as we make ourselves out to be, are we? Have you heard the one about the slow-witted preacher who uh, bought a donkey because he was told it was religious. He uh, met a, a donkey salesman who uh, said this animal has been uniquely trained and uh, you'll see that it has been, has learned that when you want it to go, all you have to say is hallelujah. And if you want the donkey to stop, all you have to say is amen. Now the preacher pondered this, thought this would be a fine animal if all of this is true for a, uh, an itinerant preacher like him. Salesman said, try it out. So he hopped on the donkey and uh, hallelujah. And the donkey began to trot and amen. And the donkey stopped. Why, this is wonderful, thought the preacher. Paid the salesman and off, off they went with a hallelujah. The donkey was trotting along, at which point the uh, preacher was lost in preacherly thought. I don't know if you know that could ever happen in there. <laughs> Thinking about uh, what, what it is that needs to be said in maybe the Christmas sermon, there ought to be a good message. He'd learned the hard way back in seminary. He had thought that the Holy Spirit was going to automatically deliver the message whenever the preacher stepped into the pulpit. And the first time the preacher tried to do that, and leaned on the Holy Spirit to give him the message. Right then and there, the Holy Spirit whispered to that preacher, you didn't do your homework. <laughs> so he's lost in preacherly thought, uh, being an itinerant uh, circuit-riding preacher in the old days. They would travel from village to village and share the word of God, the donkey trotting happily along, the preacher lost in preacherly thought, daydreaming, until all at once the preacher realized they were headed right for a cliff. Well, now the uh, preacher's trying to remember the words to get this donkey to stop, and he's, halt, he yells, and the donkey keeps trotting towards the cliff. 
Stop! And the preacher yells in the dawn. What are the words the preacher's trying? He's panicking. He says of a prayer, Dear God, save me from going off the edge of this cliff with this donkey. Amen. And one step away from that cliff, the donkey stopped. Hallelujah, the preacher shouted. <laughs> It could happen. <laughs> it does seem maybe a little odd that uh, we would have a donkey at the center of our Christmas story on Christmas Day. Brian's absolutely right. That's one of my favorite animals in the, um, in the scene in that Bethlehem stable. And what does it tell us? Why would this be an appropriate place for us to dwell on Christmas Day. Well, think about the very heart of the Christmas story. We know that God came to be among us in flesh and blood uh, through His Son, Jesus, born to be among us and of us, that God would be re revealed in our lives. But it's also true, the, the Bible teaches, that, that not one thing was made without the presence of God, all in existence long before what we know as the church or the Bible came in ex into existence. The very being of God is embedded in the fabric of creation and the universe itself. All things bear the presence of God, even the lowly donkey. And, and this is so much like the heart of the Christmas message. We, we, we use this fancy word in our theological teachings, the incarnation of God, the embodiment of God, God becoming human, God being revealed in all things if we have eyes to see and ears to hear and are made aware of the sacredness of all of life, but not only what is out there, but what is in here and what is in each of us. The very presence of God is being revealed and exists in your life and my life. I said the donkey, all shaggy and brown. I bear the love of God, the presence of God for the world as do you and I. Think about that. Isn't it true that um, over and over in the Bible, this donkey comes up as being prominent in God's teaching? Not only carrying Mary from Nazareth to Bethlehem, if, if you were to travel by the, as the crow flies some 70 miles, but in the winding roads up into the hill country surrounding Bethlehem, you would find it a 90 or more mile trip through rugged terrain, probably as much as a four day journey for them and her so pregnant being carried by this animal that would have imagined, we would not imagine being so important to the story. And very quickly, it would be a donkey again, now carrying Mary and Jesus as Joseph fled with the warning of the wise men, the wrath of Herod and his rage over the threat of a king being born in Bethlehem. Joseph led Mary and Joseph on a donkey in their flight to freedom, to asylum as refugees into Egypt where they found a place where they would be welcomed and kept until they could return to Nazareth and raise their little boy. We fast forward in Jesus' story and we come to the last week of his life and what do we meet again as Jesus enters Jerusalem with the shouts of Hosanna and all those who are praising him. Vestiges of a, of a kingly entrance, but something so different. Instead of a, a king on a, on a grand throne being carried and surrounded by soldiers and all of the might of the army, he's riding on the colt of a donkey, humble, our savior, and in the distance, in not too many days, those shouts of Hosanna become crucify him. 
we, we learn in the Bible that in the lowest in the most difficult moments God is most supremely revealed as our life and our purpose and our glory through all things the presence of God is revealed and the glory of God rises again and again within us we who are of such humble humble points of life now if you're with us all fall we taught Bible stories from the Old Testament uh, that revealed how amidst whatever chaos is going on in our lives whatever crises seem to be apparent around us God is still creating that's what we taught all fall from Bible story to Bible story one of the ones I love the most is the one of Balaam and uh, and his donkey maybe he looked a little bit like this guy Balaam you recall out of his desire to protect himself and get rich had abused his donkey terribly and it was in the midst of the abuse that that donkey itself the Bible tells us opened his mouth and spoke to Balaam it was the voice of God the voice of God setting Balaam on the right path now wanting to protect ourselves and get rich that that's a pretty normal human aspiration but it doesn't always square with God's will when we forget God's word and, and God's presence in our lives in the lives of the least and the last and the lost how God comes to us in humble circumstances as Mary accepted uh, that God would cast down the mighty from their thrones and scatter the proud in their conceit and lift up the lowly and be, re be revealed for us in our time. How frequently do we um, find ourselves wanting to protect ourselves and advance our own interests? But God calls us at Christmas to this awareness of a greater purpose and the greatest joy no matter how insignificant our lives may seem even an insignificant animal in a story tucked away God puts us in the center of God's story as instruments of God's love and God's purpose we extend this story in our lives we even say hallelujah and keep on going. I invite you to sing with me. Jesus, our brother.
God of unimaginable love, on the first Christmas, you became one of us. God of all humanity, you offered your peace to this world. God of the shepherds, you announced your arrival among us to the poorest, the most humble. God of the manger, you came to us through your son in a small and simple place. God of deliverance, you came to be one of us in order to deliver all of us. God of birth, when you became as we are, you opened yourself to each of us, no matter who or what we are. God of Christmas, bless us as we once again celebrate your coming into your creation. In a moment, we worship God not only in word, but in sacrament, and uh, we give thanks to God on this holy day for the opportunity also to worship God with our tithes and offerings. You are invited to do so in the usual way. There's a plate at the center table. You can go to gracegrafton.com, click on the donate button and follow those procedures. And text to give and also become an electronic donating person through our monthly opportunity of giving first fruits. We have uh, extended an invitation and I want to thank all of you who've been responding so generously. Uh, we discovered during this year of transition uh, out of our thankfulness for all of the assets that make this church and ministry thrive, we have this wonderful building, but we also carry a mortgage on the building. Uh, though it has a wonderful, um, very low interest rate, that interest rate will reset in just over three years. We, we decided it would be wise to get ahead of that, to welcome our new pastor and demonstrating our awareness and our ability and intent to manage ourselves in a very responsible way. And we extended this uh, gift invitation. You may have received in the mail. If not, there's a copy out on the little table that has a Christmas gift box on it, inviting all of us to make a one-time gift at Christmas celebrating the birth of Jesus in order to defray uh, the debt that we have on our building. And this one-time gift is simply is uh, between now and the end of the year. That box is going to remain up uh, next Sunday on New Year's Day. Some of the families, like my wife and I, are going to make our gift applicable to 2023 by giving that gift next Sunday. Uh, my wife and I are joined by three other very generous families together, the four families have committed $25,000 in this one-time gift campaign. We invite your generous response, whatever the amount is, and uh, you may put that gift in that box, you may put it in the offering plate, drop it off in the mail, however it works best for you. As we celebrate this sacrament, we follow the course of Jesus' life all the way to the cross and gather as he taught us to do on the night when he was betrayed. And he gathered his disciples for a last supper and he took the bread of that last supper and, and gave it to them and said, this bread is my body broken for you. And he took the cup and gave it to them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant. It's my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. And he said, When you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, remember me. My brothers and sisters in Christ, it is Christmas Day and we are God's people. Let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we commune today, uh, you'll be invited to come forward to commune by intinction. You may put your hands in the shape of a cross, receive the wafer, dip it in the chalice, take and eat and return to your seats. There are gluten-free wafers available. Simply request uh, from me as you come forward. Oh, you might have noticed that we continue to have the little kits at the center table. We know that some are more comfortable remaining in your seats. You may use those kits whenever we celebrate Holy Communion. There are gluten-free kits there as well. I invite you to come forward. We'll guide you as we serve. You can wait for direction.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. Amen. I do give thanks to God for you all and for those that work so hard throughout the year to make this a wonderful church. I invite you to receive the blessing. May the word that Mary brought to birth carry you into new and abundant life. Amen. May the word that Joseph cradled in his arms enfold you with love and strength. Amen. May the word the angels proclaimed in song bring harmony to our world. Amen. The blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Invited to stand for our close. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks and praise be to God.